when I was interviewing for my last job, I, I told my boss that I was going to open up a distillery one day, and he just smiled and looked at me and said, yeah, me too. And we were able to bond over that. But then on the day when I quit my job, I told him that I was quitting because I was going to go open up Griffo Distillery. And my boss looked at me shocked and he said, no, that, that's what you're supposed to say, not, not actually do. Where I got my start in distilling was actually in a laboratory. I was an undergraduate at Berkeley where I was distilling in a physics lab. We were doing things with uh, carbon nanotubes and boron nitride nanotubes and things like that. Things that you don't want to drink. So this is our still. Her name's Betty and she's made in Louisville, Kentucky. It's basically just a huge version of a laboratory still. It's a piece of artwork as far as I'm concerned. Everyone should have one of these in their living room. Depending on what you're fermenting, it, that's gonna produce a different type of spirit. If you ferment grain, basically you're making beer. And when you distill beer, that turns into whiskey. When you take grapes and you ferment that, you make wine. And when you distill wine, you make a brandy. You heat up the alcohol that you created and you evaporate it off and you collect that alcohol that you evaporated off. And that alcohol that you collect is the spirit that you end up drinking, whether it's a vodka, a brandy, a, a whiskey, a gin, or a rum. That all comes from that, that first fermentation process. We put everything into this. We put our heart, we put our time, we put every dollar we had. Like our still is our, um, was our life savings. Over the decade that we've been saving and then building and then running this place, there's been a lot of really low moments but I think one thing that's made us really strong and able to get through those moments is that we're both really tough people. Yeah, I mean, running small businesses is, takes a lot of grit. We both have been able to kind of balance each other out. So I'll be hitting a moment of like, oh my God, can we keep doing this? Can we keep working this many hours and struggling this much? And he'll make sure to stay up and be the one that's holding us during that time. And then it'll flip and I'll need to be the one that holds him up. And then to see it start to turn and to be able to celebrate that with your partner and with your family, it's, um, it's a really special thing. I feel like you can taste those years and years of dreaming and the years and years of saving and the years and years of building. I think you can taste that in the set. like you look at some people who are smiling and there's a sparkle in their eye it's like that on a moment it's um, something that you knew you know that was created with love and care and intention and then you're tasting all that flavor and the complexity and the beauty of it and it it makes it a moment extra magical let yourself think about what you're sipping when you taste anything he's made, your mind just has many different places to race, different ideas to consider. It's almost thought provoking when you drink something he's made.
all of those guys are throwing yeast up into the air, we're catching those yeast in our tank. So we think of it as our own version of a terroir. We don't grow in the soil, right? We grow in the tank and we're catching all of that local flavor. So no one else can make the same flavors that we can make here. My heritage is Italian. In Italy, you know, they say, you know, the best meal is when they take you know, the perfect ripe tomato from the garden and cut it in half and present it. But really, you're just trying to take really good ingredients and present them as cleanly as possible. And that's definitely what we try to do here. The Babylonians in Mesopotamia started distilling, and then it really formalized more into a science in Alexandria when the Romans were there. When people were trying to create that eau de vie. They were trying to discover the essence of life. Back then, the scientists were taking flowers and plants and animals and any sort of living thing and trying to distill them to find out what we we're made of. I'm a scientist, and so at heart, I'm really data-driven. We measure different temperatures and pressures throughout the still. Using a little bit of physics, we can back out what the ABV is of the vapor inside of the still. We collect as much data as possible because it really helps us fine-tune what we're doing. But we still distill completely by our palate, and we taste everything that's coming through. When we distill, what we're really doing is kind of acting like a prism for light. If you shine white light into a prism, the prism separates it out into all the different colors that make up that white light. And when we're distilling, we're taking that grape or that grain and we're putting it through our still, which separates it out into all the different aromatics that you can expect. Because we're gonna drink it, we choose which colors we wanna drink. On the outside, it big you see big copper stills and and barrels and um, there's a certain romance to it and it seems really cool and once you're on the inside doing it I think you realize it's it's actually even cooler than it looks on the outside. Yeah.